Okay, so I'm here to share some really, really super important information about writing your CV, whether it's your first CV or you're in mid-career. I admit that I did not have any idea of this stuff until, I don't know, maybe it was around 10 years ago. So I'd been working a long time, but I'd never really been hired based on my CV. I already knew people or whatever. And I definitely missed a few job opportunities because my CV didn't say what it needed to say. And so I was just dismissed out of hand. So your CV is really important. Um, we're gonna focus on it really well. And if it works and it's good, you'll get a job. And if not, not. So it's really important. And I have I have this um, author, his name is Martin Yate. And he, he calls himself Knock 'em Dead. He has Knock 'em Dead resumes, Knock 'em Dead job interviews, and Knock 'em Dead everything. And he sold over five million copies. So he knows everything. And he's he's incredibly focused on the details. And he has some really smart, insightful concepts. And I'm going to share those with you tonight. And it really it's the difference between getting the job and not. It's remarkable um, how powerful this is. So let me share my presentation. I already got right from your L Ball some advanced billing. She said, just listen to what I say and do it and then you'll get a job. And that really worked for her and it's worked for others. So it really does work. And it's not that I'm so smart, but this is really, it's a way of thinking about yourself as a professional and the, the business world. And you do have to switch your mind around a little bit because, you know, here, where we live in a community where family is really important and Torah and mitzvahs are really important, and uh, they, we have this expression of Bayachel Torah, right? A, a woman wants to earn a living and support her husband in Koilel or something like this. But not, the employers don't care about any of those things. They're in business to make money, and your job is to help them make money. They'll hire you if they can make more money by employing you. They don't care about a Bayachel Torah or that you're off on Shabbos and Yontif or you, whatever. Those are your values. Those are personal values and they're wonderful and that's what makes you special, but they have nothing to do with how you're gonna get a job. So you have to refocus and rethink about how you're gonna make the sale, okay? Because getting a job is making a sale. You gotta sell yourself to the employer. The prospective employer is the customer. So you're selling and they're buying. Okay, and the stuff is you, your professional persona. And so you have to develop your brand. You have to become this professional that people want to buy, that people want to hire. And so it's a whole shift in your mind about yourself, of thinking yourself as a, a young or maybe junior or inexperienced, but you're professional and you want to create value. And you, then you want to get paid for the great value that you're going to bring to this company. And all of this has to be conveyed on a piece of paper. And we're going to see the piece of paper, although it's your most important business document, the person who looks at it after the computer is going to look at it for five to 15 seconds. <laughs> so you don't have a long time to tell a convincing story. It has to have, you know, stuff that jumps right out and says, oh, I, I want this guy. This this woman has what it takes because otherwise they have too many CVs to look at and they're too busy to really, you know, go deep into it. So it's a, you have a very small window of opportunity to get your CV, to get your foot in the door, to get yourself an interview because you can't get the job without an interview. So we'll, I'll give a separate class on how to conduct yourself in the interview. But the concepts are the same. The concepts are about professionalism, about thinking of yourself as a professional. And, and what kind of professional do you want to be? You want to be the really smart, nerdy guy. You want to be the fun leadership person. You have to develop your brand. And, and again, whether you're just sort of starting but you're the one who loves knowledge or you're the one who will stay up all night to solve a problem. These are things of how you're gonna characterize yourself and the brand that you're gonna develop around your professional persona. So let's let's get started. Let me put it into this. Okay, here we go. 
So me incorporated the facts of life. I was talking about a little bit now that the job market is brutal, okay? And it favors the employers because they have the money and you know you need the money to support yourself and to create some financial security for yourself and your family. That's your goal, right? So you have to think of yourself like a company. It's called me incorporated or us incorporated, our family incorporated, whatever. And these are just the facts of life. So again, it's sort of, it's um, intense and sort of brutal and intimidating, but it, it, this is just the way it is. You have to realize we live in a jungle, a marketplace, and you don't have the upper hand, you're coming, you're coming with the lower hand. So you got to find a way to, you know, get in there and do what you need to do. So you got to hone a strategy to advance yourself in, in order to provide for your financial future. So your CV is a key marketing document of your company, which is yourself. And so think in terms of marketing, and maybe you know something about marketing or maybe you don't. Today will be the first day you start thinking about marketing. So you're thinking about your target audience. Who am I selling to? So you're selling to, let's say, cyber companies or companies that need to hire a cyber person. What are they looking for? So what I, I want to understand my customer's mindset in order to provide them with what they need. I want to be the person that they want to hire. Okay. That's really the essence of what I'm gonna present here tonight, that the CV and the job interview, it's all about the, your capacity in your mind to go into their shoes and think about what they want and then to be that person and to communicate to them that you understand what they want and you have it and you are it and you know, we're not going to tell any lies. We're not going to, you know, try to confuse them or bamboozle them. We're actually going to try to be that professional that they want to hire. So this uh, Martin Yates, you know, he says, people say, be yourself. And he says, no, don't be yourself. Be your best professional self. Okay. And that's, that's a great, that's a great line to be your best professional self. So, if your CV works, then you work, and if not, not. Your CV is part of your professional branding, which is gonna include your job search, your interview, and of course, your career management. Your CV needs to, be, needs to get past the recruiting database. The first one to see your CV may very well be a computer. So that'll be the importance of keywords, that you, if you don't have the right keywords in your CV, it will never get into the hands of a human being, so you lose, okay? So it definitely has to have the keywords, which you're going to find in the, the post, the advertisement that they, they're hiring. So take words out of what they're looking for and put those words into your CV. Ultimately, the person who looks at it, you know, the numbers are really awful from five to 45 seconds. Um, recently, I talked to a professional recruiter. He works, I think he said, for Citibank. And he's hiring in cyber. So he's, I hope to bring him um as a guest lecturer but he was he was talking about how tough it is and he said he used to he's a from guy he used to have a policy i look at every cv and he said i just couldn't keep up i have a hundred on my desk and i i just can't look at them all so again it's it's a little bit of a crap shot all right there's a, there's certainly some luck involved but you know if you do smart things then you tend to get lucky so the the smarter you are the luckier you'll be so we gotta be really smart and savvy and figure out how to get ourselves to the front of the line. So keep it simple, make it sharp and to the point. The person hiring wants to find the right person for the job and get back to work. The basics of the CV, use your CV to show that you understand what is necessary to succeed in the job for which you're applying and you have that, okay? And so you'll have to think about that how, how am I gonna succeed in this job? What does it take to succeed? And how do I have that? And how can I prove that I have that? And of course, if you don't have that, then why are you applying, right? So don't apply for the job if you can't deliver the goods. So we're talking about being honest with ourselves, but being creative and looking deep into ourselves to find the things in my, in my past, my professional or my personal past that show that I understand what they need and I 
can do it. I can be it. Okay. Study. So you need to study. It's, it's a research project. It's a big part of it. You have to study all available information on the company, on the job, the relevant issues, the industry. You have to know a lot of stuff. If, and this one's happened to me. I once came to a job interview and he asked me about the company, if I knew this and that about it. And I had tried to do some research, but I didn't really understand. I think their website was really confusing, whatever. And I said, no. And he said, well, you know, how long, how long, how long did you prepare for this job interview? So if you come to the job interview and you can't, and you don't know what the company does or what they specialize in or what they're about, then you're foolish and you, you ruined your opportunity. You got to do the homework. You got to prepare. And that's before you even, you know, do your CV because I have an important um, message for you. You will not have one CV. You may have many CVs. And each time you send a CV to a particular job opportunity, you got to tweak your CV. You have to massage it and polish it to make it into the right CV for this particular job opportunity. And if anybody feels, oh, that's immoral, right? That's not, that's not honest. So I have a beautiful Vartaira. And Moshe Rabbeinu, everybody knows on the last day of his life, he wrote a bunch of Sifrei Taira, one for each for the tribes and maybe one for the Mishkan. So that's 13 Sifrei Taira. There's, there are Divrei Torah that say they were all different. They were different with regard, let's say, to Chaseros and Yaseros, with Yuds and Vavs. But the idea is that each tribe had their own version of the Sefer Torah. Okay, which is unbelievable because, you know, the, the, the importance of the, the unity uh, of the Sefer Torah. But even in the Sefer Torah, there were, there were different versions, Kav So don't, don't uh, be surprised that your CV, there'll be many versions of your CV, depending on the particular job that you're applying for in the particular company that you're applying for that job. Because this company, to be a SOC analyst there, you have to emphasize this. And in the other company, to be a SOC analyst, you have to emphasize that. Is that dishonest? No, that's marketing. You have to understand your customer. And again, you have to stand behind what you write. You have to live up to it. But if I say to one company, I'm really fast on my feet, because that's what they're looking for. And I say to the other company, I'm really um, deep, deep in my research. So those are two different things but maybe I do have both of them. So I'm gonna choose what to write in each place based on what they're looking for. And I'm gonna sell the customer what they wanna buy. And that's business, okay? And that's not dishonest. So you have to get used to that. So don't be a Swiss army knife, be a human laser. Tailor your CV to show you have the necessary skills and understanding for this particular job. Understand what the employer is looking for, what are their priorities. Again, like I told you, the employer is the customer. The customer is always right. Try to tell your own story in a way that shows that you understand his needs. So I got a comment in chat. From Azriel, if you apply to a few job listings in the same company, can you send different CVs for the specific positions? Well, they wonder that the CV is different. That's a great question because it's the same company. So it's like one HR person may be maybe looking um, at, at your own, the s different pieces of paper from the same person. So that's, that's a little unusual, I agree with that, that um, a few different jobs in the same company, again, if it may, your CV may, may not include everything about you, okay? I mean, obviously it's not gonna tell everything about you. Uh, I'll, I'll just say something, you know, at the at an interview, it's a famous question, you know, what's your biggest weakness? So, okay, there, everybody knows there's certain famous answers to that question. But if you say, well, I have a lazy side and I love to sleep late sometimes, then you're an idiot. Like, don't say that. And it could be perfectly true, but it's not something you say in marketing. You just don't say that about yourself. And if you say bad things like that about yourself, then the company understands you'll say bad things about the company when you're trying to sell their products. So you don't understand professional life and marketing that you are putting on a show and you need to say the right things and act the right way in a professional way to show your best side and play your strongest cards. So it is my point here, Azriel, is that even in the same company, it is possible that you would send slightly different CVs 
for different positions. Won't they wonder the CV is different? No, you're showing that you have what it takes for different positions, which require different skill sets. And you have different skill sets and you emphasize different skills in accordance with the different positions you're applying for. It's a, so again, it's a little bit of an extreme case, but I, I, I do stand by the fact that even in such a case, it could be relevant to tweak your CB that would be somewhat different for the different positions. Can you apply for multiple positions at the same coming same time or is that not recommended? You could, you definitely could. So that is okay. So we're going on. Let me get back here. What, what your CV is not. I'm missing an R there. What your CV is not. Do not use your CV as narrative therapy to tell your life story in a way which makes you feel good. Okay. And and I, you know, I try to help people write a powerful CV. And and so I, I will say to all of you, of course, when you're ready to send me your CV, I'll be happy to go over it and give you pointers and so forth. And I've actually had some hilarious stuff where, you know, people say some ridiculous things about themselves that are totally not relevant to, you know, working in a cyber company. Um, so whatever, um, you know, again, you have to be really focused here. Um, your CV is a sales document. The objective is to get you an interview with the employer, not more, not less. So, you know, telling what a loving person you are or whatever, it's just not relevant. Think about the boss. Think about the employer. What are they looking to hire? They're looking to hire a cyber expert or, you know, even a cyber beginner. But the point is, it's all about your cyber skills and your professionalism. So anything that's not about that is not relevant. If you want to write a CV to make yourself feel good, you know, send it to yourself. You send it to your mom, send it to your therapist, your Rebbe, your Harusa, you can send it to me. But don't send it to a prospective employer. They're not in business to make you feel good. The CV you send to the employer is about how you match what they're looking for. It's not what you want to say. It's what they want to hear because the customer which is the employer, is king, okay? So that's really, really, that's the Aleph base. That's the heart and soul of the sugya is that they're looking for something. You want to be what they are looking for. And you need to communicate that in this piece of paper. You understand what they're looking for, and you are it, okay? That's the essence. Um, more on CV, every position you apply for, again, this is facts of life. They are hiring you because they want to make money. So in order to make money, they need to hire someone or they need to save money or they need to save time, increase productivity. But those are the only reasons I hire people. Nobody says, oh, you know what? We have too much money in the company. Let's hire some, you know, Avrechim or some women who are supporting Avrechim. You know, nobody says that. That's not how business is done. Business is done to make money, save money or increase productivity. So your CV needs to solve the empl employer's problems by making them more money, saving them money, or increasing productivity. So you'll make that analysis. Why are they hiring this person? What, what is it to do? And then you'll understand what they're trying to do, and then you're going to explain in the document how you're going to do that. Your CV should tell your story to demonstrate how you will solve their problem, okay? Whether it's to make more money or save money or to increase productivity. Other information is essentially a distraction. Um, Yates has a concept called TJD, which is your target job title and then target job deconstruction. So again, he's really analytical. Um, you're certainly you know, qualified for more than one job, but your CV needs to be targeted for one position. And that's why, I, you know, going back to Azriel's question, could you apply for more than one job? Yes, because you could do different jobs, even in the same company. Yes, you could. Again, that might not always be advisable, but there are situations in a big company and they're looking to hire tens of people. I'll tell you a secret. Deloitte is hire, is going to hire now a thousand people in Israel. Okay. And we have some people working in Deloitte. And so could you apply to more than one position in Deloitte? Of course you could, because you might be able to do this and you might be able to do that. And your CV will be different for the same company at the same time. You'll send two different CVs, each one tailored to the particular job that you are applying for. So part of that process will be the TJD, the target job deconstruction. He says, take half a day to deconstruct, which is a word which means analyze or break it down. What the customer, which is of course the employer, what are they looking for in your target job? 
study the ads for these positions, Google it, understand the industry, do exhaustive research on, let's say it's a SOC analyst. What is a SOC analyst? What do you want a SOC analyst to be? What is a great SOC analyst like? What is a terrible SOC analyst like? What are the characteristics that you want to, that you need to show you need to be? And then how are you gonna demonstrate those in your CV, okay? So your target job deconstruction will yield the template for your story that the CV should tell. It'll give you an objective standard at which to compare your CV. It'll understand the focus of the interview. It'll give you a direction of interview questions you'll be asked. It'll give you examples with which to illustrate your answers. It'll give you a behavioral profile for the best people in that job. And then you can know how to be that person. And it may give you a behavioral profile for not getting hired. If you're the kind of person, I don't know, you're spacey or, you know, you don't pay attention to the details. So, you know, that's not going to be a good, good, uh, good trait for success. Okay, he gives you some websites here, uh, collect postings from the position you seek at these uh, websites, Indeed and Worktree, et cetera. Create a target job deconstruction for each position. Um, identify skills and responsibilities. Use the keywords in your CV in order to get your CV past the database uh, uh, computers into human hands. Identify problems to solve. And like we said, identify behavioral profile of success. Think of the most effective person you know who did this job and describe what made him great and write that down on a piece of paper and then think what of those characteristics do I have and how can I be more like that person and identify the behavioral profile of failure to find the factors which contribute to the failure of the least successful person you know in this field and make sure you get rid of those traits. Don't have them, don't be them. Don't use garbage in, garbage out. Your CV needs to tell a true and powerful story, okay? Um, you know what the customer is looking for. Again, that's what we're talking about, figuring out what they're looking for. Now look into yourself and your personal history and find that stuff and then present it. Examine everything you've ever done from the perspective of your target job deconstruction. Complete a detailed questionnaire on your complete professional past. And here, before I go into the action verbs, something I tell people, and maybe in Israel, it's, it's not as big a deal, but certainly in America, and I think it's true in Israel too, if, you're, um, if your CV is in English, then it should not have Hebrew words on it. It's, I don't think it should have the word koilel. I don't think it should have the word yeshiva. Um, and certainly not, you know, harder words than that. You know, Beit Midrash Gaboa. I don't think those words should be on, a, on an, an English language CV because the guy reading it has no idea what those words mean. They might as well be Chinese. So change, you know, if you learned in Lakewood for five years, so you, then you learned in BMG Academy or something like that. But don't write Chinese, right? Think about the person who's going to read this. And we're coming from a particular community and we have a sort of sprach. We have a sort of yeshivish that, that we know and we understand each other but we're going out into the broad world and they don't speak yeshivish. So our English needs to be clean and clear of any of that stuff. You want to sort of de-emphasize your yeshiva stuff and, and you want to try to close the gap between ourselves and the general community. And I'm not saying to not, you know, pretend you're not Jewish. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that no one's going to give you the job because you're really from or you have really long payas. They'll give you the job even though you're from and even though you have really long payas. And I actually have a, Baruch Hashem, a big success story. We had a great guy in the course like two years ago, an English guy, a shtigl chasidish. And he told me recently that he had applied for nearly 200 jobs. And he's in a tough place. He's in London. And, you know, the English, the English are, you know, there's a definition of English anti-Semitism. It's hating Jews more than absolutely necessary. Anyway, he's really good at cyber, but it's taken him a really long time to get a job. And now he, Baruch Hashem, got a job. So he was asking me how to avoid shaking hands with women and when should he tell them about Shabbos and Yontif and stuff like that, which were good questions. 
But I gave him really good answers. I said, do not mention Shabbos and Yontif until they've offered you a job, because you want them to offer you a job. And then you can talk about, okay, I have to keep Shabbos and Yontif. And you could put that in your contract. But don't tell them up front, oh, I'm not going to work on Shabbos and Yontif, and I have this, that, and the other thing, and I got a daven three times a day, et cetera, et cetera. Are you trying to get a job? You're trying to lose a job. So you have to play your cards intelligently. Um, the kids are, my point is here, there is a cultural gap to overcome. So you want to try and overcome the gap and de-emphasize the differences between us and them. Okay, more about language in your CV. Um, the things that you've done in your past, you want to use action verbs. Just to say that you were a certain position is boring. We want to tell what you did, what you accomplished. So words like built, completed, created, designed, demonstrated, developed, examined, facilitated, generated, headed, implemented, launched, marketed, negotiated, originated, performed, published, programmed, reduced, solved, trained, upgraded, validated, wrote, those are words of action, things you really did. And I'll add already right now, considering that we're in a very technical industry in cyber, so I'm a big believer to put in your projects. Um, anything that you created in your Python project or your InfoSec project and created a key logger, whatever, and you've uploaded it to GitHub or wherever it is. So I like to see those links on your CV. Again, you're a beginner in the field, so you don't have a long job history to, you know, to flash. So what can you say about your cyber experience? Well, you've done some projects and that gives you something to talk about. Um, in the When we talk about job interviews, we'll talk about three different people that are going to interview you. One is going to be an HR person. And, you know, I, I sort of give a caricature. It's a woman who's 30, right? She's a nice lady. She doesn't know much about technology. The other person who might interview is the CTO. And it's a man who's about 40. And he's really technical and not very personable. And the other person who might interview is the CEO, and he's a 50-year-old man, and he understands both technology and people, but he's a little bit tough. So those are three different situations that you're going to be in in an interview, and you're going to talk about different things about yourself with those different people <clears throat> based on who they are and which aspects of yourself do you want to emphasize in order to get the job offer or get to the next stage or the next interview. So Again, if you're talking to the CTO or you're talking to the CEO, you want to emphasize the technical stuff. And so having your project on your CV, which they're probably going to be holding when they're talking to you, and so having your project in front of their face is a good starting point to talk about something that you know about because you researched it or you did it, you created it. And so that gives you something to talk about that you can be proud of and it's hands-on, it's something you really, really did. As opposed to, oh, I'm a really quick learner and I'm really devoted and I, I, you know, I never give up until I solve a problem. Those are just words, anybody could say those words, right? So that's sort of weak. But if you say, I created this, this thing, I hacked into a cell phone and here's, you know, here's the stuff on GitHub, whatever. So that's, you know, that's not debatable. That's a fact that you really did. So that I consider that very powerful. I'll, I'll skip to another thing that I consider really powerful and that's certifications, okay? Um, I strongly recommend at some point, whether it's during this course or after the course, it, it may be a key step in getting your first job is getting a certification, whether it's Security Plus or CEH or OSSCP or EJ, EJWP, whatever it is, but having a certification is an undeniable um, credential that says that you know what you're doing. And nothing else says that the way that those standardized tests prove that you know something about the field. So, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, working in this field, you should begin to develop your strategy uh, towards certification because it's not a one-time thing. The people who are in this field, like Leo and people who are very advanced, they continue all the time to get more certifications because things are changing and developing and you build your portfolio. I think Leo has 14 different certifications. So it's something that you'll, you'll always keep on doing. 
Okay, um, CV accomplishments, achievements, and successes. So he has something here called the card format, which is challenge, action, and results. Um, the challenge, what was the pain point which you solved? And again, this is more if you already had a job, uh, you have some work experience, and you accomplish something in your job. What did you accomplish? Again, it, just to say I was, you know, an office manager, or I was, you know, to say the name of the position, of course, you'll name the position, but show me how how valuable you were to that company. So I'll know that you're going to be valuable to my company. So there was a problem, I took action, and there were measurable results, whether it's dollars or percentage of sales or growth, whatever it is, you want to use you know, measurable, quantitative uh, proof of your value to the company that you work for. So use numbers to quantify your success and the contribution you made to your past employers. I will, of course, share with you my presentation. I'm not going to read through all the bullets. Um, in America, there's a big deal called your cover letter. In Israel, it's less less of a big deal, but it never hurts. It's another opportunity to share the essence of your brand, why you want this job, and you're convinced that you're going to be great at this job if they'll just give you a chance and so forth. So a lot of times having a, a good, a powerful, attractive cover letter is a very important bonus to your CV. But both your CV and your cover letter, you should invest in them. Recently, there was a woman, she works in the bank where I, I go to the bank, and she actually took um, not the full course, but we did something called to emote cyber to Morning give people. Progress, 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 progress. Um, we had we had a short course, and she took the short course. And so I went to the bank, and she said I was in your course. I said, Oh, great! Um, there's a position. Uh, send me your CV. So she sent me her CV, and she's been working five years in the bank. So you would think she's you know a certain level of professionality, but I was appalled. Her CV was pathetic. Not at what it said, but the way it said it. It was, first of all, a blank piece of paper, just a white piece of paper. She And again, she's Israeli, and Israelis don't know this so well, but she didn't capitalize the, the words, like cybersecurity analyst. They were all small letters. I was like, oi vey. So I sent it back to her, and of course I was polite, but I said, you need to invest in your CV. And there's millions of templates online, whether it's in Word or in Google or, you know, you know, search the web. And but if you send me that piece of paper that shows that you put it together in 15 minutes. So what does that say about you as a professional that you don't take assignments very seriously and you just try to do them as fast as you can with as little work as possible? So why would I want to hire you? Whereas if you send me a CV that looks sharp. And it has it's it looks nice on the page. It makes an impression. Oh, here's a, a professional that cares about the way things look and the impression they make. That's the kind of person I want to work for me. So your CV should be a graphic success in addition to documenting your professional success, because professional success is the name of the game. We're looking for winners. They want to hire a winner. Nobody's going to hire somebody because they're pathetic and I want to help pathetic people. No, I want to give jobs to winners. So craft an effective cover letter to introduce your CV. It should match in font, in tone, and content. Your cover letter would briefly state your unique qualifications for this position by stating how you fulfill the characteristics which the employer seeks. And again, you don't always need one. It depends. And sometimes you don't have the opportunity because you're just uploading your CV to a database or something. So again, whether you need a cover letter or not, it depends. But besides whether you do or don't, your CV and your cover letter, everything has to be invested in. They have to look nice and powerful and professional in addition to saying the right things. So your CV needs to maximize your performance in the database. If it doesn't get past the computer, you already lost. It has to demonstrate your complete grasp of the job's deliverables. What am I going to need to do on this job? And then your CV has to say that you know how to do those things and you're great at doing those things. It has to create a professional brand for yourself. Okay, I have a sense of who this person is. 
It needs to showcase your relevant achievements, attributes, and expertise. It needs to minimize your weaknesses. Um, and for a lot of us here, maybe everybody, a weakness is we don't have any experience in the cyber field and we're trying to get a cyber job. So when people write on their CV, you know, cyber student or, you know, I'm a cyber enthusiast, I say, don't do that. <laughs> call yourself a cyber professional. Call yourself a cyber analyst. If you want to call yourself a junior, that's okay. But again, you want to downplay your, place your, down, uh, downplay your weaknesses and play your strongest cards, okay? Start with your strongest card. We're going to see now there's three different formats for a CV. And the main thing that you need to know, it does not need to be chronological. No one's trying to find out what you did since the year 2000, okay? They, what they want to see on this piece of paper is why are you the right person to hire for this job? So it may have very few dates on it, okay? It, what it's going to have is skills, stuff you know. So in formatting your CV, there is, of course, a chronological format that's the most common. It starts with your current job title and responsibilities, and it works its way back. It's good for showing growth in one profession. So if you've been an accountant for 35 years, so, okay, you've done a real lot of accounting. The weakness is it's not good if you're just out of school, like many of you, or you're changing careers, or you've had long, long unemployment. Let's say you were a mom and you were home for 15 years raising your kids, and now you're coming back into the workforce, but you do have job experience from 15 years ago. So to just put it chronologically, in 2002 to 2005, I was the assistant principal, and now in 2023, you know, nothing. So that's not helpful. You know, so they'll ask, what were you doing? And you say, oh, I was a stay-at-home mom, which is wonderful. And Joe Biden bowed to a woman with 12 children, shkoyach. But you don't want to arouse questions. You want to make a case. So in this case, let's say you were a stay-at-home mom for 15 years. You want to focus on what you know. So it'll be a functional format of your CV. It'll focus on your professional skills, the job title, your uh, performance career summary, your core competencies, the highlights of your career. And it won't necessarily have, you know, year after year what you did because that's not relevant. It's more free form. It's good for entry level professionals with little experience or with experienced professionals who are changing careers or returnees to work after long absence. It's not as conventional. It, they might ask you, where were you <laughs> over these years? But then you'll answer. But the point is, you're going to paint a picture of yourself as a really strong professional based on whatever makes you a really strong professional. Okay. And of course, your CV could be a combination of chronological and functional. Um, it's tricky how to do it, but there's no hard and fast rules. So think again analytically what is going to make the case that I'm the right person for this job and then create your CV accordingly. Um, Okay, he's really specific about this, his five steps to a great CV, a first draft containing the essentials of your story based on your target job deconstruction, gradually improving the, the versions over a week, adding, subtracting, cutting, moving, pasting, um, third draft to integrate your defined professional brand throughout the CV, fourth draft, tweaking as you go, final draft, a formatted resume, grammatical, editing, and polish. I must tell you, I get, you know, people send me their CV and there's like spelling errors. And I'm like, didn't you spell check your CV? Or they hadn't cut out some of the bullets like from the, the template that they copy from. So again, I'm your friend and I'm here to help you. I'm not hiring, I'm guiding. So I'm, I don't, you know, I don't get angry. I just tell you, you left some stuff there, but you know, use a critical eye, have your husband, your wife, or your friend, somebody proofread it to make sure that there's no spelling errors, you've capitalized all the right things, et cetera. Your, your CV should be a powerful document that doesn't have, excuse the word, fadichos. It shouldn't have anything embarrassing in it. What goes in and what not? Again, I was a lifeguard in summer camp. Is that relevant? Well, it might be. I mean, maybe there were life and death situations and I was good under pressure and I saved lives or something but it, it might not be. And so don't put it in. Again, we're not trying to tell everything you've done since your bar mitzvah. 
We're trying to make the case. I know what you're looking for, and I have what you need. So include languages, if you know other languages. I mean, Yiddish is arguable whether it's, you know, though we do have some cyber companies in Lakewood and Brooklyn who work with Yiddish speakers. So if you speak Yiddish, that's valuable. Um, but certainly French, Spanish, Portuguese, or anything else, those are all very val valuable skills. Uh, military experience, projects, publications, professional associations, those are excellent um, assets. Don't, in, I mean, your, your CV does not need to be called CV, okay? It should just really be your name, okay? Um, it shouldn't have a salary, not age, not age, race, religion, gender, national origin, photo, health, or physical description. If you're going to be a fashion model, so that might be relevant, but to be a cyber uh, analyst, it's not. So none of those belong in there. Um, he calls them judgment calls, summer, part-time employment. Okay, reason for leaving previous job that should never be in there. References, you could say references available and give a name or an email address. Um, name change, marital status, hard to believe. Written testimonials, personal interests, clubs. Closing brand statement, that, that's a good thing to have. Again, something about yourself or your brand of what makes you great. Okay, this is mine, cyber stuff. So I mentioned already certifications are really big plus to have. So start thinking about that. I, I, for beginners who don't have any job experience in the field, what are you gonna write? You're gonna write your skills. What do you know how to do? What did you learn in this course? Um, so a list of skills. And of course, I'll be happy as we move forward to share with you some examples of, you know, CVs that I've received from students in the course over the year to help you get started on it. And like I said, the projects that you've done, your projects are a good thing to put into your CV. It's a topic of interest and it gives you something to talk about and something to be proud of. You're not just faking it. You didn't just show up to class. You actually did something in the course and produce something. So that, that says a lot about you. This is from Yates, short sentences. Don't use big words to try to inflate yourself. Eliminate pronouns. You don't need to say I, I, I. Um, and articles whenever possible. Use bullets, forms is good. It does not need to be only one page. Again, if you don't have much to say, you don't need this to spread it out. But if you do have you know, more than one page worth of stuff, that's okay, two pages is fine. Um, of course, use your best friend Google. If you Google, you know, cyber, junior cyber analyst or whatever, you know, cyber uh, technician first resume, you'll get a lot, you'll, you'll learn a lot of stuff. So resumecoach.com, resume.o, these are good sites that will help you. Uh, you'll see templates and you get ideas then of what you want to put into your CV. Lots of online tools. LinkedIn deserves its own sort of class. Um, I'll see if we're going to have a separate class on LinkedIn or when I talk about interviews, but LinkedIn is super important. And I'm, I'm not a big social media person. Um, and I understand, you know, as a from person, you might not want to be in social media very much. And, and also sometimes we have young women, let's say, who before they're married, they don't want to be there. But once they're married, they are there. LinkedIn is a very professional place to be. And so even if you are never, ever on Facebook and Twitter, whatever, I think that's fine. But I think really, once you get ready to get hired in this field, I really think you should have a LinkedIn account because it's where professional people are and you just get job offers and you see what people are talking about. It's part of the professional landscape. So LinkedIn is really important. So think about, you know, as soon as you're ready to open your LinkedIn account, it's not too early today as a cyber security student or a junior analyst or whatever you decide to call yourself. Um, you, can con you can contact HR managers there. There are groups on LinkedIn. There's something called Leading Cyber Ladies. Um, you can get recommendations from other people. I'll recommend you there. And you start building your connections in LinkedIn. So that's it's a big deal. You're definitely gonna look at the websites of the target companies to see what they're looking for, what are the jobs and, and so forth. Should we have LinkedIn Pro paid version? I don't have LinkedIn Pro paid version. Like they want my money and I don't wanna give it to them. I don't see the need for that necessarily. So I don't think you need it. You'll see if it's, it's, it's something you need, you'll pay for it, but I actually don't think so. There's Israeli high-tech sites. 
Um, a smart idea, someone said, is follow the money. A company raised a lot of money, they'll be hiring. So right now, right, there's less investment. But again, there's still a shortage, a huge shortage all over the world in our industry. They still need people um, in, in cyber. Um, sorry, can I ask a question? Please, Moshe. Um, wasn't there in the news lately that there's a lot of um, firings in this industry? Yes, in yes, you're right about that. I'm glad you brought it up. So, um, you know that people in Tel Aviv who work in high tech get paid a real high money. <laughs> Baruch Hashem, I have a daughter-in-law who works for Cyber Reason, and these the, the the developers, the programmers and stuff. These people have tlushe maskoret. They're earning like thirty-five thousand shekels a month, okay, which is a real lot of money. I don't I don't think I have to prove that to you or tell you that. And 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 these are companies that aren't necessarily earning a ton of money. They got a ton of money from investment. They got tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars from investment. And so they can sort of throw money around. I'll, I'll tell you, my daughter-in-law, um, they had like, you know, gibush of something for the team to, you know, build team spirit. They took them out to Mitsada, like in the middle of the night and had a barbecue there. And, and my daughter-in-law, she's like a computer girl. She like, and she's not so social. She hated it. She didn't want to be there, but she had to be there. But they just, they spent so much money a nonsense on Kilo social stuff like that because tons of money was flowing in. So now when money is not flowing in because the whole investment situation is different or the inflation and whatever, whatever, everybody knows about that. So they have some really expensive people and they cut them. They have to fire them. So there have been a lot of layoffs in a lot of big companies. That's a fact. But it's not so relevant to the level that we're coming in on. I, I got a bad news for you. We're not coming in at 35,000 shekels a month. We're coming in, you know, at 6, 8, 10, 12, those kinds of numbers. And so they need the hands on the keyboards. So they're letting go of the people that were they were overpaying, but they have to hire younger people to do the work. So, yes, there is a certain environment that's not as rosy maybe as it was, you know, two years ago or something but it doesn't directly affect the need for young cyber talent. So that's my answer to that question. Um, I'm almost done. Okay, send your CV follow-up. I, I recall that Yael Ball said she tried to apply one job a day and that wasn't easy. So that's really interesting of how much she invested, right? That it took her a whole day to apply for a job or you know, it maybe didn't take her the whole day, but it was a big deal. And that would be five jobs a week. And again, it worked for her and she has a great job today. So certainly you need to keep a folder of what you applied for. And then to go back to them a week later and say, okay, I applied for the job, I haven't heard from you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a whole process. I mean, getting a, getting a job is a job and it's not gonna happen in a week or two or three. It's gonna take a month or two or three or four or five or six, okay? That's, and I can't change that. And, you know, that's just the way the world works. And it's Shiduchim. And, you know, there are some people get stuck in Shiduchim and some people who marry the first person they meet. So there's Mazel in this and there's Hashkacha Pratis. I'm talking about Hishtadlus, of doing smart things. But at the end of the day, it, of course, involves a lot of Siyat Dishmaya. I highly recommend you daven about it, okay? But we're talking about behaving smartly. That is the end of my presentation. If you have more um, questions, I'll be happy to take them. But again, um, I'm here for you and will continue to be uh, here for you. I look forward to getting your CVs when you're ready to start working on them, which could be now or later. I will give another presentation about how to conduct yourself in a job interview, and maybe we'll look at more detailed stuff about uh, LinkedIn at some point. Um, I look forward to having Leo back next week, Bezrat Hashem, after he gets up from Shiva. And I thank everybody for being here. And I will see you next week.